Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're going to get started here this morning. We've got quite a bit done in the last day or so. Uh, we got the airport done. We got the uh, field at the shop done. We got my farm done. Um, so now we're down on our buddy Jeff's and this is where we had non-official plow day. So from where you see the corn standing over is where we plowed. Uh, we didn't plow any of this because this is higher ground. So uh, we got here last night, got started, got quite a bit picked off. We've still got some through the center here and I've got like six rows over there along the neighbors. So uh, the goal is to hit this hard, get this finished over to the next road. And then I think we're gonna go down to my grandpa's farm and uh, see if we can get that done today. So uh, let's get started here, start a video. So if anything exciting happens, we can catch it on camera. So let's go. Well, I got the ends picked off over here. Got a good start. Corn doesn't look too bad uh, until you get to this little bit of ridge here and then it drops off a little bit, but it's still pretty good. Still got some nice ears on it, so that's a good thing. But uh, I, uh, before we came here, uh, I picked off my farm, which I farmed for uh, three years now. And I've kind of gambled on it because it is higher sand ground. Uh, the last two years I put soybeans on it and uh, broke even. Well, this year I had corn on it and I actually turned a small profit on it. So I was pretty happy with that. So I, it's only 14 acres and I kind of just farm it, you know, just, just for fun. Uh, a friend of ours owns it and uh, it's kind of back in the woods and stuff. And he asked me if I wanted to farm it. I said, sure. So I took it on. So I might plant something different on that next year. I might try some forage sorghum or something like that. Or I don't know, or not forage sorghum, grain sorghum. Sorry, I want to harvest it for the grain. So I might try something different on that 14 acres. We'll see what happens. So farming is a gamble, but it's also an educated gamble. Like for example, my 14 acres there, um, I picked a hybrid that was good on sand. I uh, went with a fertilizer program and a spray program that fit what I was after target yield wise, well mostly that with the fertilizer program, but the things I couldn't control on that farm and I gambled on was the weather. You know, um, luckily it got the rain that it did or it probably wouldn't have produced what it did, but if it wouldn't have rained, I wouldn't have got nothing off of it. Uh, another few things that you gamble on are the, the hot and the cold and the wind and the hail. You know, like here, we have wind damage. That's something that we couldn't tell you that we were going to have this spring when we planted it. Mother Nature is a big determining factor and that's who you gamble against. So, it definitely is a gamble. Oh, look at there. Found us a buck. Yep, looks to be like uh, maybe a six-pointer. He's out looking for a doe. Oh, he's coming back. I bet he's in his rut because he's being dumb right now. Going right into the corn that I'm picking. They get a little dumb when they're on their rut. They've only got one thing on their mind. where he went now. Oh, he's right here. Yep. Well, he's running towards Dad now. Oh. Well, I wonder if that buck's still in here anywhere. But Dad and I this close to each other. He's got nowhere to go but forward. Let's see if maybe 
and went to the neighbors. There's a rabbit. Switches backwards for the head up and down. I don't like that. It's weird. All right, I'm gonna keep picking till I fill up, and then I'll park and wait for the trucks to come back. Ah, that's better. I'm back in my old rat's nest without the monitor in my face. So, uh, the millennial farmer made a TikTok video, and uh, I was watching it the other day, and. Uh, I guess there's a sound going around on TikTok about uh, some young farmers that are kind of discouraged because they don't feel like their operation is cool as like Larson Farms and Millennial Farmer and some of your bigger farmers on, on YouTube. 
They, they say that it makes them feel like the Beverly Hillbillies with their equipment. Well, farming is not a competition and it never was a competition. You should never feel like you have to compete with any larger farm. Your farming operation is tailored to you. Um, there is nothing wrong with running this older equipment. I mean, look at us. We're running a 1981 Gleaner and a 2002 2388 Case IH. If anybody is the Beverly Hillbillies, it's this guy right here sitting in the old L2. Ah, we got some down corn in this field also in spots. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is be proud of the equipment you have. Be proud that you have the ability to keep the old equipment running if you run old equipment and you maintain it. I enjoy the old stuff. I mean, obviously, look at, look at me when I was running the 2388. I wanted my L2 back. But there is nothing wrong with running this old stuff. And you know what? I think it is cool as hell when you're driving around the countryside and you drive past the farm and there's a handful of 80s muscle tractors sitting outside ready to work. I would rather see that than see a bunch of brand new John Deere equipment sitting out in front of a building or brand new Case IH. I think it's really cool when I see a farm that still runs the old equipment like we do. So. You know, and there, there's there's many successful farms out there that are large acreages that still run the old stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. So don't be ashamed of it. Show it off. You know, and I understand that there are farming operations that have to run newer equipment. Um, not everybody's farming operation is the same. You know, you've got custom harvesters out west that have to run, you know, six, eight, nine, ten combines, and they all have to have newer machines to be dependable. Um, so, I mean, don't take this wrong. Don't get offended by it. I don't mean every operation has to run old stuff. But for us guys that do, it's really cool. And there's nothing wrong with it. And that's what the Millennial Farmer even said. His favorite tractor on the farm is not any of the new ones. It's his old Minneapolis Moline with the loader on it. That's his favorite tractor. And like he said, that puts the Beverly Hillbillies to shame. But uh, farming's not a competition. Never was, never will be. And if you think that it is the competition, you're dead wrong. You know, I'm not out here trying to, to compete with my neighbors. You know, I, I don't know. It's just, I, I hate like hell when I hear a young kid get discouraged from farming because he's like, I'll never be able to afford that. Yes, you will be able to afford it. Just work hard, put the time in, and you'll eventually get to it. It's not gonna happen overnight. So here's kind of an example how our operation is a little different than other farming operations. You know, I could have another newer combine like the 2388 or like a 6088 or something like that, but I don't want to spend that extra money on a machine and invest that much in it to have another one sit around, you know, nine, ten months out of the year not being used. It's a machine that can only be pretty much used in the fall. Well, I suppose you cut wheat in the summer with them. But for us, you know, we, we only use the combines two months out of the year. So, like, there's nothing wrong with the old L2. I have very little in it. I, I gave 1500 bucks for this combine when I bought it. So, and I've gotten like five, six seasons out of it. So, I mean, if I'm going to spend that kind of money on a piece of equipment, it's going to be a piece of excavating equipment or farm equipment, or like a tractor that I can use year-round. So, anyways, with that being said, I'm going to end this episode right here because my battery's about dead. So, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a good evening.